other people drop me, you keep your hand on. Other people won't go for me. Other people won't go for me. You keep your hand. in this house this morning come on somebody can you lift your voice can you clap your hands and enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise come on somebody ought to lift your voice somebody ought to give him praise in this house hallelujah we've come to magnify the king we've come to exalt the king of kings in this place we're ready for a downpour, let it fall, let it fall fresh on us. We're ready for revival, let it fall, let it fall fresh on us. It's The time is now. We need the rain.
that changes everything I'm free, but fear is holding me Nothing can stop my praise Whoa, oh, 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 we were made for free Jesus has redeemed my friend Yeah, yeah, oh, 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 oh sing it out together Freedom reigns forever and ever Let freedom free Hey, put your hands together
he been good to anybody? Put your hands together and give God a praise. Has he brought anybody out of a miry clay? Has he put anybody's feet on solid ground? Somebody give him praise. Hey, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries. feels good in the house this morning hallelujah are you free today come on are you free in the house Woo. thank you Jesus At this time we're gonna go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer there are many needs represented in this house we want to bring just a few to your attention prayers are being asked for brother Renee who is actually in the house this morning thank God Amen, but he still needs a healing touch in his body. Let's also please pray for Leon Reynolds, who's in the hospital and fighting an infection. How many know that your God is more than able to meet and supply every single need in this house? Come on, there's no sickness that's too strong. There's no disease that's too great. I wonder if we can lift our hands for a moment and just give our God up some praise. Come on, whatever your need is in the house, he's able to meet it. Come on, whatever your situation is, God has an answer right now. Somebody lift your voice. God, we need you to move in this place. Would you have your way, God? Move in this house. Touch, heal, and deliver in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody lift your voice. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice in the name of Jesus. Oh, it's good. 
this house and generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. Just lift our hands in this place for a moment. Wonderful. Every eye can be closed for just a moment and we can just lift our hands in his presence. Come on, somebody, let's be sensitive to this moment right here. We don't have to rush this moment. Wherever you are right now, I wonder if you could just lift your hands in this place. Wherever you're standing, can you just lift your hands in this house? Oh, God, thank you for your presence, Jesus. Woo. Go ahead, somebody, don't, don't rush it, don't rush it. Oh, God, we're thankful for your presence, Jesus.
God, can you just reach over to someone next to you right now? I don't want to rush this moment. There's people who are getting what they need right now. Can you just reach over? Can you touch the shoulder of the person next to you? Come on, somebody. There's a ministering moment in this house right now. There's a ministering moment in this place right now. Oh, God, right now, would you release your presence, Jesus? God, would you release your power in this house, Lord? Oh, God, would you bring strength to those who are weak, Jesus? God, would you bring peace to those who are troubled right now, Lord? God, would you open the eyes to those who may be blinded, God, right now, Jesus? Even as we're standing in your presence, God, would your spirit begin to move from the tip of every head to the sole of every foot? God, right now, we release your power in this house, Jesus. We release your power over broken hearts, God. We release your power over messed up financial situations, God. We release your power over twisted homes. God, your name is greater and your blood is more powerful. Would you release the bonds that are binding people in this place right now, Jesus? Would you break the chains, God, that are in this place right now, Lord? We know that at the very mention of your name, God, that you are in the midst, Jesus. God, would you begin to minister in the hearts, God? Begin to minister in the minds, Lord, even as we're standing in your presence, Jesus. Martha, don't get so caught up in the protocol that you can't sit at the feet of Jesus for just a moment. Come on, Martha, don't get so caught up in the protocol of a servant that you can't just put it on hold and just sit in his presence for just a moment. For this moment and this is your moment right now go ahead somebody you've been waiting for this moment right here go ahead right now go ahead that's it right there that's it right there oh, go ahead somebody there's a shifting in the atmosphere there's a shifting in the atmosphere right now Woo! Shatayala da 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 da
presence in this house. I wonder if we could just clap our hands in this place for a moment. Oh, we're so thankful for your presence, Jesus. Amen. 
I'm thankful for a church we don't get stuck in the protocol of services and we don't just move past God moments. My word, I, if that is any glimpse of what's going to happen in this place. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You can make your way back to your seats in this house. We have a few announcements here this morning. Be here Monday through Friday for daily prayer, whether it's 6 a.m., 12 noon or 6 p.m. after work. Make time to be here at the church to pray. Kids Zone is meeting here this Friday at 7 p.m. in Building D. For field night, put on some shoes and come ready for some outdoor fun. Family prayer is this Thursday at 7 p.m. Outreach is this Saturday at 1 p.m. Street ministry is this Friday and Saturday night at 7 p.m. He will be meeting here this Friday at 7 p.m. for servants night. Come ready to have fun, amen. EP has wrapped up orders for this year's Caribbean Cuisine Dinner. So pickup will be right outside of the meeting center after church has been dismissed. When you exit the building, turn left and walk all the way down the hallway towards Tarpon Street. Thank you for placing your order. Amen. We're so thankful to have all of our guests and visitors that are in the house with us this morning. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Rod Church on Sunday morning. You just get out of your seat and greet each other in Jesus' name.
on top of the world this morning. Clap your hands one more time as you find a place to give. If our ushers could come this morning, we're going to take up our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. Man, I like what I feel in this house. And we're starting a season, a new season of revival. And you can look around this place and see all the masses of people. You see all it takes to run a church this size. And you wonder, how does all this get done? Well, I was studying in my Bible the other, this last night, John chapter 6. I was talking about where Jesus came out of Galilee. And he was on top of a great mountain. The Bible says that a great multitude followed him because they saw that the miracles that he did was church time. The Bible says in verse number three, and he went up into the mountain and there was his disciples and it was Passover, a time of feast. It's church time. Let's have some church. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company come unto him. He said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these many eat? Bishop, how are we going to pay for all these bills? at all this. How are we going to do this? I like this verse right here. Verse number six. Or verse number five, he says, when Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company, he said, how are we going to buy all this bread? Verse number six, and he said to prove him. That word prove means to, he's going to show how you're going to do it. How are we going to do this? He said he knew how he was going to do this, so he's going to prove himself what he would do. Number seven, Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient, Lord, for everyone will only be able to take a little. And one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, there is a lad here. He has a couple loaves, he has five loaves and a couple fishes. But Lord, how is this going to work with so many? Jesus said, make the men sit down. And there was a lot of grass in that place, so they sat down. And the number of them was 5,000. Then Jesus took so little. The Bible says he broke it up among so many. Bishop, I often have a hang-up with offering. This is just my flesh. I'm just being all, all, uh, honest this morning. Lord, how do you take so little that I have and you make all this work? It doesn't matter the amount that we have to give. It's just that when we give, where God is in it, he can take a little and he can make so much. Just bring what you have this morning. Don't worry about what it is. Don't worry about how small it is. God's a miraculous God. He's going to take your little and he's going to make so much. Amen. Let's have some revival. Come on, church. Bring what you have this morning. Wave it before the Lord and say, I'm going to give this to you this morning, God. You're going to have to do the miraculous. Come on, let's give this morning. as the
open up your mouth and give him a shout of praise in this place. Woo! I dare you to testify in this place that God's been good to me. Somebody that's been delivered, I dare you to shout right now because he brought you out. Somebody with a testimony in this building, I dare you this morning. I need some extra addicts that aren't afraid to give him the praise. I need some ex-alcoholics that aren't afraid to run this morning. I need some ex-street workers uh, that aren't afraid to shout uh, and give God the glory in this place. Uh, come on. Come on. I should have been dead uh, and sleeping in my grave. Uh, but the blood, uh, the blood, uh, the blood, uh, the blood uh, of Jesus uh, set me free uh, and he brought me out uh, and he brought me over uh, and he brought me through uh, somebody shout yes uh, shout yes uh, shout yes uh, give him a shout of praise in this this is the sound of freedom this is what deliverance sounds like. Uh, this is what it sounds like uh, to be set free. Whoa! I remember one place in the scripture, they told Jesus, you need to settle everybody down. They acted a little bit crazy for a Sunday morning. Don't you know we got guests and visitors and uh, you can't be acting like this up in here. Uh, oh, Jesus turned around and uh, I know you just got to know the kind of people uh, that would have been in the crowd that day. Probably it was people like Lazarus uh, who had been dead in a grave for three days uh, when Jesus called his name uh, and brought him out. Uh, probably it was like uh, the woman uh, who was at the well uh, that Jesus ministered to. Uh, probably the woman caught in the very act uh, was in the crowd that day uh, whom Jesus said go uh, and sin no more. Uh, and they had a reason uh, to give him the praise. Uh, I can just imagine uh, Jesus telling him, uh, if you want to stop him, uh, then you go ahead and try. Uh, but if these hold their peace, uh, the rocks uh, are going to cry out. Uh, hey, uh, I don't know about you this morning, uh, but ain't no rock uh, going to take my place. Uh, I've got to give him praise. Uh, I've got to give him praise.
Dean. From the hand of the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Somebody clap your hands one more time and give them a praise in this house. Woo. Shout if you got the victory this morning. Shout if you know God's able this morning. Shout if you came with expectation this morning. Shout and tell your neighbor, neighbor. Tell him the Holy Ghost is moving right now. Now tell him, get ready. 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 You might have to kick your shoes off. You might have to loosen your tie. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Woo! Hey! Hey! My God, there's no telling what's about to happen in this building. If you came with sickness, uh, healing's about to overtake you. If you came with chains around you, uh, they're about to break in this place. If you came with walls surrounding you, uh, they're about to come down uh, in Jesus' name. Anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Clap your hands one more time. Woo! Are you grateful to be in the house of the Lord this morning? High five about 10 people on the way to your seat. Tell them ain't no stopping us now. Woo! I know y'all think that that's a 70s secular song. But the word of the Lord declared it way before that song was ever written. Uh, that no weapon formed against you uh, shall be able to prosper. I wish I had a Bible reader in the building this morning. Ain't no stopping us now. Every weapon formed against me. Every weapon formed against me. Well. Shout, it won't work. Shout it again, it won't work. Shout it one more time till you believe it. It won't work. Look your opposition in the eye and shout it won't. Woo! Welcome to Sunday morning at the Rock Church. My God, you can be seated if you can. If you don't want to sit down, you can keep standing, shouting, running, doing jumping jacks. Whatever you feel. We're so excited you're here in the house of the Lord today. Would you help me give a great big round of applause to all of our first-time guests that are with us? We can do a little bit better than that, Rock Church. Help me make some noise this morning. If you are here and you are a first time guest today, we want to tell you what a privilege and an honor it is to have you right here at the Rock Church of Fort Myers. And when you walked in this morning, you should have received a VIP invitation card. This is an invitation for you to join us immediately after the service in our VIP room. Everybody knows that VIP stands for very important person. And we want you to know that you're a very important person to us today. Amen, Rock Church. 
And we have some light refreshments and a small gift that we'd love to give you just as a token of our appreciation that you would come and spend time with us this morning. Amen. Somebody, would you help me clap your hands one more time for all of our guests that are here today? Amen. It is so wonderful to have Brother and Sister Hicks back with us this morning, all the way from Pueblo, Colorado. They're no strangers to the Rock Church. They are friends of ours and this church, and we're delighted to have them in the house of the Lord today. And uh, so good to see Brother Keegan in the house of the Lord with us this morning. He's no stranger here either, but we're excited that he's here visiting family, and we're excited about that. And Man, it's so good to see Brother Moore back home again this morning. Hey, Amen. We love you, Brother Moore. So excited you're here today. And, and uh, what a privilege to uh, look up this morning and see Brother Darian Jordan here with us. All the way from Spokane, Washington. Would you help me give him a great big welcome? He's been here before, but we're sure excited that he's here today. And uh, there is simply no telling what God is going to do before this service is over with. How many of you excited about Impact International Youth Conference? August 17th, 18th, 19th, just around the corner. It's going to be absolutely incredible. You don't want to miss it. And uh, do whatever you got to do to make plans to be here Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday morning. If they've got you on the schedule at work, just call off sick. That's right. I'm sick of going to work. <laughs> I'm not advocating dishonesty. You have to find a way to be honest. Amen. I'm just kidding. But if, if, if there's any way you can, you, I promise you, you don't want to miss what's going to be happening right here Thursday night. Pastor Miles Young from Elk Grove, California will be kicking us off. And then Friday night, none other than evangelist Jacob Phillips. Saturday, Pastor Stephen Collins from Birmingham, Alabama will be in the building. And uh, of course, we're going to have a powerful after party on Sunday with evangelist Jacob Phillips. And uh, it's going to be cray cray. If you don't know what that means, ask your kids when you get home. Amen. But it's going to be awesome. And uh, also, uh, this morning, what an absolute surprise to see Sister Sarah Lavroni home this morning. She's not a guest. She's at home this morning. Sister Sarah, I love you so much. And I'm so excited to see you here this morning. We love you. And uh, God is doing great things. Did anybody come with expectation in your spirit? Come on, stand with me all over the house, if you would, as we prepare for the entrance of God's Word into this place. It is a privilege this morning to have with us uh, from all over the country, via JS Mississippi. I got to say it right, Mississippi. Evangelist Jacob Phillips is in the house this morning. And uh, I'm so excited. He was with us last year for uh, a week's worth of services. And God did some incredible things. And for quite some time now, we have prayed uh, about him coming. And both of us have just allowed God to kind of work that out organically and put his hand upon the timing. Because that's, that's how I like God to do things. Amen. And uh, so the, 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 the timing worked out for him to be with us. And uh, I don't know how long he's going to be with us. We're, we're about to blow up. I mean, blow up. Y'all was waiting for the rest of what I was going to say. That you missed it. We about to blow up in here. And uh, we're, we're, we're excited uh, about him being here. I've known Brother Phillips for quite some time and uh, love and appreciate his ministry. Brother Phillips, we are ready this morning. We've gone deep, we've gone high, we, we broke the glass, busted the floor, and we're ready to go wherever the Holy Ghost wants to take us today. We want you to come, take your liberty this morning. Would you put your hands together one more time? Come on, would you lift your voice all over this house and give God a great big praise as the man of God comes to deliver the word. Well, clap your hands as loud as you can and lift your voice. 
and give God one more shout of praise. Come on, how many believe he's worthy? We serve a worthy risen God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Book of Jonah this morning. Book of Jonah chapter 1. While you're turning there, let me say what an honor and a privilege it is to be here today. I love this church. I love your pastor. They are pastor and first lady. They are some of my dearest friends. I appreciate their love for truth and their walk with God. And I am just thankful to be a part of what God is going to do. And I just want to tell every Rock Church member, buckle up, put your seatbelt on. Keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times because there's no telling where we're going. And I believe by the end of this revival, we could literally be cramming people in the balcony because there's nowhere for them to sit down here. Thank you for all four of you that believe that. The rest of you, you just catch up a little later. I said, I believe that God is going to do something in this house that's going to blow the doors off of this building and we'll have to be cramming people in the balcony. I really do believe God's doing some great things. Uh, just to, I, I, Pastor, is it all right if I just tell it what, I, what, what God's been doing? I just left a revival in Rialto, California, where we 176 people get the Holy Ghost in 17 weeks. 17, don't, don't tell me he can't do it. I already seen him do it. Man, man. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1, I realize today I will not be reaching for everybody but I'm reaching for five or ten that are in this house that are looking for direction and I want to obey the Holy Ghost and hopefully help you get what God has for you today Jonah chapter 1 verse 1 now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the son of Amittai saying rise go to Nineveh that great city and cry against it for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. He found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof, went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Just want to preach for the next few moments under the unction of the Holy Ghost, a simple statement that is more true right now than ever before, and that is simply that God is in control. How many believe that? How many really believe he's in control of everything? God is in control. Would you lift your hands with me and let's pray together. God, we love you. We thank you. We worship you. God, there's nobody like you, not in the heavens and not in the earth. We pray right now that you would have your way in this house. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost flow through this place from the front to the back and side to side. God, I pray that even now, even now, God, that you would begin to work on someone's heart and change us and challenge us by your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Would you give the Lord another hand clap as we Get ready to receive the word of the Lord and are seated. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. I would venture to say on this Sunday morning that if anyone here, there are very few and far between that do not know the story of Jonah. Jonah was called by God to change the Ninevites and turn them towards the Lord. And this is going to be very important, so please hold on to this. And that is the fact that the Ninevites are, are the city of Nineveh is inhabited by the Assyrians. Everyone say the Assyrians. It is the Assyrians that are in control of Nineveh and they are ruling and reigning with an iron fist in this area. And we, we get into the word of God and it's not very hard to see that wickedness was the purpose. But we don't have to dig really far into the religious strongholds of that day to find out what was at the heart of their evil. It was idolatry. 
I am of the belief, belief, Pastor, that every sin is connected in some form or another to idolatry. We can go to the Word of God and find from the very beginning of time, idolatry has been the cause of sin after sin after sin. When Lucifer fell from heaven, it was because he said, I will arise like the Most High. I'll be like a God. And so because of his idolatry in himself, he got sent down from heaven. We find Eve in the garden, and when Eve fails God, I, I don't know exactly what moment she began to believe what the serpent was saying, but something in me believes that it was the moment that the serpent said, if you eat this, you will be like a God, that she began to believe his lie. We go from there, and we see that Moses takes God's people out of Israel, and the first time he turns their back, hey, they they bow their knee to a golden calf, and they began to worship idols. It's all centered around idolatry. They get to go into the promised land. God finally opens the door, and when they walk in through the door to the promised land, God speaks to them and says, don't let your daughters marry their sons because they worship idols idols and they they worship the gods of the sun the gods of the moon the gods of the day the gods of the night the gods of stars and, and you get into the new testament and you find that they even got to a place they had so many gods that they could not name them all so they built them a temple to the unnamed gods they didn't even know who they were worshiping say when they were going somewhere today and so with, with, with the idea of of worshiping pergamos and diana and Aphrodite and all of these gods of the New Testament. We, we fast forward another 2,000 years and here we are in 2023 and, and people are still worshiping the idols of Hollywood and the idols of the sports world and the idols of this and that and we could go on and on throughout the Bible and throughout time and find that idolatry is at the heart of everything that is evil. Men, lovers of the pleasures. And I, I know y'all thinking, my God, where's he going? Just hang on a minute. I'm preaching this. But it, it, it's, it's intriguing that, that everything connected is running through this, this spirit of idolatry. It's the spirit of our day. Men, lovers of pleasures of flesh rather than lovers of Christ. And so the only thing that God could do then and the only thing that God can do now is send them a preacher. And so God sends them a preacher to Nineveh. You'll find it in every minor and major prophet throughout the Old Testament. There is a moment that God tells them to repent for their idolatry. And so God chooses Jonah to go to Nineveh to preach to a people, an idolatrous people, and tell them, that they must turn from their sins. And we look at Jonah from our little Sunday school point of view. We see this man that no doubt has been called by God, but he decides that he knows better than God and he goes in the opposite direction. He runs away from God. He runs away from the purpose and the calling of God. And, and because, uh, obviously, because he is a prophet, God is speaking to him. But just because he was a prophet, that doesn't mean that he wasn't human. Doesn't mean that, that he didn't have fears and he didn't have uh, a, a issues that he was having to deal with. And as we read the text of Jonah, it is very easy for us to step back and shake our saved and sanctified finger in the face of Jonah and say, Jonah, you rebel. Jonah, you're good for nothing. Jonah, why did you run from God? Jonah, you, you, you shouldn't have done that. Jonah, you knew better. This is God we're talking about about and you ran the other way but the truth of the matter is as we're reading through this passage all we see is that he ran we do not get to see why 
Bible doesn't give us the instruction of why that, that Jonah would run the opposite direction. And so we have to study to show ourselves approved. And as we study the word of God, we find very quickly that the reason that Jonah ran is because Ninevites were known for killing the prophets of Jehovah. The Ninevites were known. As a matter of fact, there are parts of the eastern wall of the city of Nineveh that were, that had, were built on the heads of the prophets prophets of Israel. Now you tell me you wouldn't have ran. It's a whole lot easier to sit in Sunday school and, and, and look at him and say, no, you shouldn't have done that. But when you think about the fact that Jonah was going to lose his head if he went and told them, you must repent. Every other prophet before him had, had went and gave their word from God. And the moment they walked through the city, they chopped off their head and they taunted them. And they taunted Jehovah and they taunted Israel, letting them know now you're one less prophet because your God sent a prophet to us. But God sees all of this and God knows that Jonah is afraid and God knows that Jonah is somewhat rebellious and God chose Jonah because of his weakness. Can I preach for just a moment that you think you got it all figured out and that God doesn't want to use you and God doesn't love you because of your mistakes and because of the issues in your world. But can I tell you that as much as God knew what was going on in Jonah's world, God knows what's going on in your world. And as much as God chose Jonah in spite of everything that he had done to fail God, God brought you into this house today knowing your failure, knowing your fear, knowing your faults. And he said, I'm not worried about that. I want to bring you in and give you a purpose and give you a calling. Somebody better hear me today that in spite of your failure, God is in control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so because God is in control, he allows Jonah to run. But can I tell you that even while Jonah was running, God was in control. The Bible says that he goes into a boat and he's going the opposite direction of Nineveh. And the Bible says that God prepared a storm. And in the middle of that storm, they, they, they begin to lose their direction. They lost their way of being able able to navigate from point A to point B. But can I tell you that while they weren't able to navigate, God was still in control. Jonah didn't know what was going on until he prayed a little bit and, and the lots fell on him and he looked at him. He said, I know you're in a storm boys, but let me just tell you the reason why you're in a storm. God is in control. Can I tell somebody today that even in the middle of your storm that I got a God that's in control. Even in the middle of your test, I got a God that's in control. You may, your world may be spinning out of hand. You might not be able to have any direction. You don't know which way is left and which way is right. But I got a God that even while you're confused, he's in Oh, I'm preaching to somebody right now. You walked in this place. You don't even know why you're here. You don't even know how you made it through the front door. Baby, I came to tell you on a Sunday morning, God is in control. You, you don't even know why you what why am I here? I tell you why you're here. God woke you up this morning. He put you in your right mind. He and he said, you're going to church today. Mate, you might not even be here because you want to, but God sent you here because he's in control. You, you might have walked in the door fussing at your husband, fussing at your wife, but God, he's in control. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He is confused, but God was in control in his confusion. The Bible says that they throw him out of the boat, and now he's not just confused, but Bishop, now he's consumed. Oh, I'm going to preach this. See, that's what somebody is today. You're not just confused, but you're consumed. The 
issues that you've been dealing with have taken you to a place where you can't even move because you've been consumed by financial difficulties. You've been consumed by depression. You've been consumed by anxiety. You've been consumed by fear. But can I tell you, while I am afraid, my God is in control. While I while I am consumed, God is in control. While I don't know where to go, God is in control. I'm being crushed by my problem, but God is in control. See, somebody, somebody, you, you're still struggling with it and you're wondering, well, why, why is the preacher telling me that? We're going to get to somebody here in a minute. But one thing you've got to figure out right now is that I cannot do anything on my own. See, that's, that's the reason you're confused and that's the reason you're consumed uh, is because you've been trying to wrestle life down uh, and make life do what you want it to do. Can I tell you, you ain't strong enough. You ain't smart enough. You ain't got enough money. God is in control. And if I let him have the reins to my world, he'll take control. Everything that's wrong, he'll make it right. Everything that got turned upside down, he'll turn it right side up. Everything that the devil meant for evil, he'll... He'll turn it around and he'll work it out for my good. God is in control. The storm was orchestrated to change your direction and the consumption was orchestrated to get you to bow your knee if you don't know why it's going on, let me just tell you, God, I'm going to say it till you hear it tonight in the middle of the night. God is in control. The Bible says that while he is consumed, that he begins to pray. And Bishop, he don't just pray. The Bible says that he turned his face towards Jerusalem. Now let me ask you a question. How in the cornbread world can a man in the belly of a fish in the bottom of a sea know where Jerusalem is? I'll tell you why. Because your response to the confusion and the consumption will always be turned around by conviction. And the reason a man can know where Jerusalem's at, why he's in the belly of a well, at the bottom of a sea, is because God didn't give up on him. Can I preach to somebody right now that feels like you're just like Jonah and you're in the bottom of the sea, at the bottom of the barrel, but the reason you're here today is because God didn't give up on you and he, he seen you where you were. He knew what you were going through and he reached down and poured out conviction on you. Somebody ought to give him praise because he didn't give up on you. I should have drowned it, but he didn't give up on me. I, I should have died in the belly of the well, but he didn't give up on me. I, I should have died in my depression, but he didn't give up on me. I should have committed suicide, but he didn't give up on me. I should have walked out on my family, but he didn't give up on me. I, I should have lost my mind, but he didn't give up on me. Thank God he's in control. Thank God he never left me. Thank God he never forgot.
forsook me. Thank God he walked with me. He talks with me. In the middle of the trial, he's still there. He gets to the place that God wants him to be. And the fish spits him out on dry land. Jonah's now got the attitude, I'll do anything you want me to. Just don't put me back in there. The Bible says that he begins his journey. And this is where we got to trust history. And, and for those history buffs in the house tonight, you can, you can prove me right. Is that, again, it is under control of the Amalekites. And they are the Assyrians, I'm sorry. And the Assyrians have this way of doing war that for miles and miles in every direction, they have the fastest men in their country. And they would stand up on a hill and they would watch. And anytime they seen anything happening, they would run back to the king at Nineveh and tell him what was coming. So if a army was going to attack them, they would know. If a prophet was coming to town, they would know. And so I just picture my little Sunday school brain as that man comes huffing and puffing into the king's court. King, we got another prophet coming. And he says, sharpen my sword. Somebody find the hungry lion. We're going to torture him. But he said, no, 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 King. King, you don't get it. This one got spit out of a fish. Say what? Yeah. He, I, all of a sudden, I just stand there, and I was watching the ocean, and this fish rolled up in the shallow water and spit this man out. And he got seaweed wrapped around his neck, but he's coming to tell us a word from God. And that changed everything. Why? Because of idolatry. See, it connects us to the book of 1 Samuel where the Bible says that the ark of God goes into a certain false god's temple. And when it goes into the temple, they, they came in and they found the ark of God there and their little god had fell over on its face. And then the next day, I don't have time to tell the whole story. I'll preach an hour and a half. I don't have time to do that. But, but the next day, they come back in because God is in control and, and the head is cut off and the hands are cut off. It just so happens that that was the same God of the Assyrians and it was a God by the name of Dagon which was half fish oh I'm going to preach this and half man and so what happens is this Jonah is crawling out of the belly of the fish quite literally he is crawling out of the mouth of their God and he comes up and he makes his way to Nineveh and as he gets to Nineveh he begins to proclaim that there is only one God and you gotta turn from your evil ways can I preach to somebody today? Uh, the reason you've been through what you've been through, uh, the reason you came out of the belly of that well you came out of uh, is because there's a Ninevite uh, that needs to know uh, I've been where you are, I've seen what you've seen, uh, but my God is in control. Uh, I've been in the belly of the well. Uh, I've been addicted. I've been strung out. But God was in control. I, I used to be an alcoholic. But God is in control. I used to be a crackhead. But God is in control. I'm, I'm going to preach this. We got a lot of people. We got a lot of people that come to church and they're trying to hide what they've been through. I don't want nobody to see the scars. I don't want nobody to know where I've been. Baby, let me tell you something. There's a Ninevite that needs to know your story. See, you, you, you may be a visitor here today, 
and you see all these folks and they dressed up and they got their hair all did and they got a nice tie on and they drove up in a nice car but the truth is is you don't smell the, the fish on them no more they've been delivered from the fish a little while and if, if you knew their story if you could go back through time and you could see what they've been through you would understand why there's so many crazy folks at the rock church it's cause somebody done come out of the fish. Somebody done crawled up out of the depths. Somebody done been through hell and back. But you're still here and you got a testimony to every Ninevite that's living in Fort Myers. Our God is in control. Jonah the least likely to succeed. Jonah, we preach more messages about flunkies from Jonah than anything. Jonah the failure. Jonah the no good. Jonah the rebellious. Listen to me. Has the greatest revival recorded in your Bible with the exception of the day of Pentecost. A hundred and 20,000 in seven days from somebody that God said, I'm going to put you in to bring you out. See, see, you, you're wondering why you got in that abusive relationship. And, and you're wondering why you were molested when you were a baby. And, and, and you're wondering why God let you bring up, be brought up in the hell you were brought up in. But can I preach to you today? God put you in to bring you out. If God really loved me, he wouldn't let that happen. But baby, it's not just about you. It's about the 120,000 that you're going to affect in form. One soul can change a city if they figure out their testimony. I've been through hell, but I'm still here. And God has a purpose for me. I'm just telling somebody right now what you've been through it was for a purpose I don't understand it the Bible says that God prepared the fish not the devil not society God prepared the fish because God was in control. The word prepared there is an Aramaic word and it's the word manhu, which is also found when the children of Israel come out of bondage and the Bible says they woke up one morning and there was seed on the ground. And they looked at it and they said, this is manna. Yeah. For they wist not what it was. So this word manna is the same word used in this context as Jonah says, God prepared. <laughs> well, I don't like this fish I'm having to deal with. And you don't realize it was orchestrated by heaven. I don't like this test I'm going through, and you, and and you just don't realize it was it was orchestrated by heaven. I, I I don't like what I'm in right now, but baby, I'm telling you, there's a little girl out there that's standing on the street corner selling her body right now, and she's only 16 years old, and she needs to know that you came out of the fish, so. You, why am I going through what I'm going through? I'll tell you why. Because God is in control. And he's not just interested in you. He's interested in this whole city. I'm just going to tell you, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I ain't never smoked a cigarette. I've never tasted alcohol, Bishop. Never. 
I don't know what it's like to be high on drugs. I'm thankful my wife is the only woman I've ever known. I was raised in a godly home. Well, let me just tell you something. Some of you are looking at people like me and saying, well, I wish I was like that. Let me just tell you something right now. There's a world out there that'll never listen to a word I say. Because I don't have any tattoos up on my arm and scars in places they shouldn't be from needle tracks. I ain't got none of that. So they're not going to listen to this preacher from Israel that walks into Nineveh. You know what they're going to do? They're going to cut off my hand, which is a representation of taking away my ability to speak in their life. But when somebody crawls out of what they've been through, what's my purpose? Why? Why have I been through? I'm telling you because there's a Ninevite that's got the same story as you and they need to hear God is in control. Bishop will come and say, I need you to connect with so and so and there's that repulsion in your spirit. I, 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 no, 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 Bishop, don't, don't, don't ask me to do that. That's, that's where I came from. That's the whole point. People here today, your first time in church, you're being brought down to this place right now because God. God is in control. Tell you something, you didn't, you're not here by accident. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. You're not here by accident. I want to shake you. You're not here by accident. But why things have to be so bad before? Because sometimes we don't listen and sometimes God knows what it's going to take to win. Just Not just us, but our whole family. I was preaching a revival a couple years ago, three years ago to be exact. And in that revival, I'm, I'm closing. In that revival, we had one man, one man, pray through, one man, come to the altar. But he was a Jonah, Bishop Williams. God had him in the belly of a fish. And when he decided to get baptized some two weeks later, 70 people showed up to see one man. Jonah get baptized I was talking with that man actually this week and I just I started asking him questions like why who what when where why all that good stuff and he looked at me with tears in his eyes he said I know why I've been through whatever what I everything that I've been through I said, well, tell me why. He said, because I'm connected to so many people that are just like I used to be. God help us that he brings us out of darkness into his light. That we don't start trying to hide where we've been. Hide the pain. It, listen, I'm just going to be honest. It, it hurts to have to go back to that moment and relive that moment. And, and, and that's why some of it, I'm dealing with something right now. That's why some of us don't want to go back there. And that's why you don't want to witness. And that's why you don't want to let somebody else know about Jesus. Because every time you walk down that street and you see that little girl standing on the corner. Or you see that little boy that's lying and telling everybody he don't have any food. Uh, and he's going to spend the money on drugs. Uh, you see yourself. And it hurts to go back to that moment because now you've got to remember all the bitterness and all the pain and all the grief that you had to go through. But I'm telling somebody right now, God didn't save you to just save you. He saved you, Jonah, to save Nineveh. Right now, somewhere in Fort Myers, there's a druggie and he's praying. He's, on, he's coming off the high and he don't have enough money to get another hit and he's praying. 
God, is there more? And there's a Jonah in this house. That's got the answer to his cry. There's somebody here today. You found yourself asking those questions. Is, is there even a God? If God, if God really exists, why hasn't he answered my prayers? Can I preach to you right now? He's answering them right now. He's answering them right now. Because he sent a man all the way from Mississippi to tell you there is a way. There's a way. There's a way out of this. I don't know how depressed you are, but there's a way out of your depression. I don't know how many pills you're having to take to deal with your anxiety, but there's a way out of your anxiety. God is in control. Stand with me from the front to the back, side to side. There's already people in this altar that are praying, but there's somebody here today You've been asking yourself the question the whole time I've been preaching. We've shouted, we've danced, we've cried, we've snotted and, and rolled in the floor and done all of that stuff. But right now, God's given somebody an opportunity to come out of the fish. Come out from amongst them, the Bible says, and be ye separate. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will call you. I'll make you my people. Come on, would you come today? If you're tired of living in the fish, if you're tired of being depressed, if you're tired of being addicted, if you're tired of having to deal with this same family issue, that I, I'm the one I'm pre feeling right now. There's a man in this house, God's done showed me. I can lay my hand on your head. You've been playing around with other women and your wife don't know it. You came to church today with shame and guilt. Come on, God can heal your marriage and God can put you back together again. Come on, you don't, you don't have to go that way. You you know, your world doesn't have to crash. Your family doesn't have to end in a wreck. And I'm going to go shut up. And I'm going to go shut up. Come on, come on, come on. There's more, there's more here. There's more. Why don't we do it like this? Everybody that has breath in your body, why don't you make your way out of your pew to the front? We don't want to make anybody feel like you've got to deal with the guilt and shame. God did that for you on Calvary. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. Come out of the fish. Come out of the perversion. Come out of the addiction. Come on, Jonah. you got a story to tell. And nothing can catch you by surprise You've got this figured out You're watching us now. But if you don't have the Holy Ghost If you've never spoken in other tongues when As the Spirit gives the utterance God wants to fill you with the Spirit right now Come on, God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost And that'll be evidence When you begin to speak in another language As the Spirit of God gives the utterance Come on, come out out of the fish Come on out of your addiction. Come on out of the perversion. It doesn't have to end this way. Come on, you're dealing with the spirit of suicide because everything you've done has compiled in the shame and the guilt. It doesn't have to end like this. We're standing here only because you Come on, I need everybody praying with somebody. Everybody praying with somebody. Looking back on where we've come from, it's because of you and nothing we've done to deserve the love and mercy you've shown. Strong enough to pick us up. You made a way when our backs, when our backs were against the wall, and it looked as if. 
And if you're here, if you're here and you don't have the Holy Ghost, I want you to hear me right now. If you've never spoken in tongues, what you need to do is lift your hands and begin to pray. God, I'm sorry for the sins that I've committed. I'm sorry for what I've done that was wrong. Come on, this isn't just a repeat after me prayer. It's got to come from your heart. God, I'm sorry for what I've done. I need help. I can't do it on my own. I'm insufficient and I'm insignificant. And I need your help to change me and to take me and make me what you want me to be. Now you lift your hands and you begin to praise God as loud as you can. Tell somebody near you, I want the Holy Ghost today. And some, somewhere in the course of this uh, service, you're going to begin to feel something. Move on your tongue. It's going to be like nothing you can explain. You let it flow through your mouth. It's the Spirit of God. It's the Holy Ghost. Let it flow. Let it flow. Come on, singers. That's it. Come on. Let it flow through your mouth. Come on, let it flow through your mouth. City, you move mountains. You cause walls to fall. With God, the power for miracles. For miracles, there is nothing. There is nothing to hold.
tongues all over the altar this morning. Come on, there's a breakthrough happening all over the sanctuary. Come on, this is your moment right now. Lift your hands and open your mouth. This is your moment right here. Yes. Yes. Woo. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes. Yes, this is the moment. This is the moment. This is the moment. Go. Go. Go, go, go. Go. Not hold anything Woo. back. Hey. I'm yes. not holding anything back. Not holding yes. anything back. I'm not holding anything back. Oh, I'm not holding anything back. Come on, that's it. Not holding. Come on, lift your hands and get back. everything you need from him not right now. Holding anything back. I'm not holding anything back. Not holding. See?